So I was thinking maybe because my last name is Guzman. Guzman is what they didn't give me the visa, but Mama says, Go, you will get it. And I, I was like, nah, I will not get it. So we went, we get our passports, that would that is easy. But then we went for the visa. And then we got a visa. I called Mama, who was the first person. For many years, he was the first person who knows many things about us. She would not be anymore, but, well, she would be my heart. But then we come to the United States, and she didn't know. I just come home. I met a lot of people. And I say, Mom, where can I get a cup of water? She was like, she, she never expected was me because she didn't know. She, we were supposed to come like five days later. <laughs> but we arrived to Kansas and we enjoyed that moment like we never. She, she make a plan to go Branson. Oh my goodness. Believe me, I never had vacations in my life like that, even in Mexico. I live in vacation for Vallarta, but, but not like I did with, with my family here. So, uh, Mama says uh, that She, she told me, you are not my, my son of blood, but you are the son of my heart. So I think many of you, or many of ours, we wasn't her son of blood, blood, but we were her sons and daughters of her heart. And believe me, I just said that my mom passed away and people were thinking I should go to Mexico, but don't record this, stop the camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, but <laughs> I love my mom, she like I love her my mom. I really do. I love my mom of course. But Mama showed me what love of God is. She showed me what the patience is, what grace is, and all what God is. Man, I think she learned to have that from Jesus. So, make proud her life. Last night I was worried about my life because she all this year she has been praying for me. And I was worried who would be praying for me. But then God says there is no life. She always they always pray for us. So, people, let, if you don't want to let shine God, let shine, shine, uh, shine the mama's life. When people saw you, they could say, oh, that's Sheila Kalker's daughter. Oh, that is Sheila Kalker's son or nephew, or granddaughter. Because it's a privilege to be part of this world. And I'm so proud. God bless you.
<laughs> gotta be honest. Uh, I wrote a letter and just be patient with me. But I remember when I first started working for Mimi in the office, she always told me, Tristan, if you get ever offered a job, you need to take it. I'll be fine. Somebody else will come along with me. And I just agreed. I was like, okay, maybe I'll do that. But what she never knew, well, now she does, but I became multiple jobs just to stay with her, which I don't regret at all. I will definitely remember all of our late night shows and movies we watched together. Also, uh, I'm going to remember making you all sorts of meals and different recipes. And with some good recipes, sometimes it would be the best meal she ever had. <laughs> or the worst meal she's ever had. <laughs> but I can't tell you how many times we would just take one bite I go up to whatever I made it on and just throw it straight away. Because nobody would eat it. Um, I will also miss making her coffee every morning and giving her dessert late at night. I still remember our last real conversation. Uh, she had to go to bed early because her stomach was having issues. And she told me when she was on the bed, she was like, Tristan, you are so good to me. I don't know what I'd do without you or who would be here to take care of me. And I told her all the time, if I can't, Somebody else will step in. And every time she'd say, yeah, but I just want that person to be you. And then she told me that she loved me. And then I went to bed, and before I went to bed, I told her to see her. descriptions of her memories, I can envision what her life had been like growing up. I know the exact location that her brothers left her for dead when she was a young girl. <laughs> they decided to make a human top out of her. They wrapped a rope around her and gave it a good yank. They pulled a little too hard and down she went, hitting her head and passing out. They only stopped playing and came back to check on her out of fear that they had, hadn't killed her and how much trouble they would be in if she survived and told Grandma on them. <laughs> I 
I know the path she walked to school and was amazed that it really was uphill both ways, even in the snow. <laughs> the memories she shared with Grandpa as we would drive across Brooks Dam will forever live on in me. I was blessed to have had a mother that loved to share so much with all of us. I will miss so very much the car rides that took us three hours to go from Horton to Hiawatha because we took the scenic back roads. She has always been my rock through the most difficult times in my life. Now, for the most difficult time a mama's girl can go through, she is no longer just a few blocks away. I can no longer pick up the phone and cry to her as she gives me the best advice that only she can give. She truly was one of a kind in so many ways. I love you, Mama, and if there is one thing that can give me any kind of peace at this time, it's that you are with the love of your life, looking down on all of us together as we celebrate your sweet life. Until it is time for our reunion in the sky, I will be loving you every minute of every day. Thank you for all the things you have taught me that will help me get through the loss of you. I love you. Well, we found the barn. 
along with some other outbuildings, all while I continue to remind everyone in the car that we are trespassing. <laughs> Mom urged Summer to drive further, deeper, way too far for my anxiety levels. <laughs> At one point, Summer and Megan decide to jump out of the car and look for any loose remnants from the old barn that meant so much to Mom. I'm nearly ready to pass out at this point from the stress and anxiety after noticing a truck on the adjacent property. Mom was laughing at me and we were both laughing at Summer and Megan. They came riding back to the car with remnants from the old barn. Megan is dragging a six to eight foot piece of barn board behind her. <laughs> they get it loaded in the car and we had to move our heads to one side to allow room for this giant piece of wood. Summer barely gets the car turned around because, of course, it's muddy. They all keep taunting me, pretending to hear sirens from the police coming. Mom was laughing so hard. Megan jumps out again to retrieve more artifacts from another old building that was long gone. She retrieved smaller but memorable pieces of wood at that location, and I begged them to be done. It was time to go. As we precariously drove back down the grassy, non-existent driveway, my anxiety began to lift until Mom looks at Summer, who was driving, and says, Give it hell, Summer. I know these roads. <laughs> Our last hilarious adventure was just a little over a year ago. Mom asked me to take her on one of these drives on a beautiful spring day. Ethan rode along, too, although I insisted on driving Mom's new car. So we ended up at Claytonville Cemetery to spend a little time with Dad, as we often did. Mom couldn't walk very far, so we always parked down close to the graveside. And as I tried backing out, I ran into a flexible guard pole that outlined the driveway. The problem arose when her scooter lift on the back of the car got caught on the pole. Mom and I were laughing so hard. Poor Ethan got out, clearly frustrated with me as I tried to follow his directions to release the vehicle from the clutches of the pole. I'm not sure how, but we were free. So back in the driver's seat, I decided it was best to just drive back down by the headstone and make a U-turn, forgetting that it had recently rained. And it was muddy. <laughs> uh, so the car quickly became stuck in the mud. That was the final straw. We laughed until we nearly wet ourselves. <laughs> Poor Ethan vowed he would never go anywhere with us again. <laughs> As he made me call his co-worker who lived down the road to come pull us out with his truck. <laughs> we love talking about these adventures from time to time, always with more laughs, and talking about doing it all over again sometime. Mom can be very serious at times. But the fun and laughter we had together will give us memories to last a lifetime. The final thing I want to say is her last post on Facebook, which was the morning before she went to the hospital, she reposted this. I had my own notion of grief. I thought it was the sad time that followed the death of someone you love. And you had to push through it to get to the other side. But I'm learning there is no other side. There is no pushing through. But rather there is absorption, adjustment, acceptance. And grief is not something you complete, but rather you endure. Grief is not a task to finish and move on, but an element of yourself, an alteration of your being, a new way of seeing, a new definition of self. I know she was probably thinking of Dad when she posted it. Wow. What a message to leave for all of us.
I was the only son that I am never adopting. I'm never going to adopt. I'm not going to do that to you. My kids, I'm not going to do that to my household. I'm not going to do that to my life. And when um, I did that, I forgot that you never say never with God because he has other plans. And so God brought me a son. So many times now, you hear about the hate in the world, and I just decided I love for no reason. If the whole world can hate for no reason, we can love for no reason. And mom and dad loved for no reason. They loved because they had the hearts to love. Mom and I didn't always have the easiest relationship, but I think it's because we were so much alike. But she never gave up on me. She never gave up on any of us. She prayed for us. She loved us regardless. The last year of my life was one of the, the sweetest years because I got to have a real wonderful relationship with my mom. We'd always had times that we loved and but we, we struggled lately. I always sought to find what was wrong in me that I couldn't. I couldn't accept the love from other people, things that had happened when I was much younger, nothing to do with the family. And I was always trying to talk to her and let her know my heart and ask for forgiveness for the things that I had done. But together. I visited her a couple weeks before and it was almost like she knew because she asked about some of the brothers that, that she, my brothers she hadn't seen in a while and was asking about their kids and, and just kind of catching up with people that we haven't really ever talked about in a long time and I just felt like it was her conveying to me that I could eventually convey to them that she thought about them and she loved them and even if she didn't know how many kids they had today, she was thinking about them and praying for them like she always did. And her and dad were just always like that. They just always gave their love to everybody. And so that's all we can do as her legacy is to continue to spread that love to everyone. And I'm just so thankful that she was my mom. I'm thankful for her.
she loved having such a big family, and she always had a welcome home for anyone, no matter who it was. I remember my first trip to Mexico with everyone. I was so nervous, but everybody, everyone gave me the welcome and showed me everything that was going on in life. And it helped me, it helped me with my faith even more, because I was struggling so hard. Mom was always there, she was my rock, no matter where I was. She helped me find my way back to God again, because I was lost for years. Her love will always be there, even though she isn't here physically. And I just want to say thank you to all my sisters and brothers and her as well.
at this time we're going to hear one another song. Well, oh, you have one more? Okay, we have one more story. No, we have a couple. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do these two and then we'll do the song. Okay, go ahead. I will be very brief. <laughs> um, my sister Brooke talked about how things changed when mom went to work for Lutheran Social Services. I am so thankful that she did go to work for Lutheran Social Services. I met my mom and my forever family when I was 26 and was planning on adopting my own children and going through um, the adoption process. Mom was my trainer and we were sitting there and she kind of laid out who she was and all the kids that she'd adopted and fostered. And after the search, after um, the training, I stood up and I said, where were you when I was growing up? I grew up from birth to 21 in the foster care system in Missouri. So I was not, again, I was 26 when I finally found my mom and dad. And the interesting thing about that is that my sisters never made me feel like they didn't find me until I was 26. There were times we would sit around at mom's and they would start telling the story and someone would go, you remember, nope. <laughs> no, but I feel, but I feel like I was there. I felt like I was loved by my siblings, all my siblings, whether they were adopted or the birth children. We weren't treated differently, and so I'm thankful that she had the opportunity to leave the home, so that I met her, and I still have my siblings, and I still have that love. Thank you. Home. I'm tired of getting this group home, you know. Everybody getting to go out on weekends. 